so to get rssi for your x6b receiver or any flysky receiver you'll need to flash a firmware that will allow the receiver to output the rssi data on a certain channel so that the flight controller can read it and then display it on your on-screen display and to do that you need the stm usb adapter and you'll have to download the stm utility software along with the stm drivers which i have linked in the description and you can download it from there and then install the stm utility software along with the drivers so that we're ready for the next step and of course you'll have to download the custom firmware file which is also linked in the description and these firmware files are made available by mr cleric so you can go through all the list of the firmwares that are available and then select whichever you'd like to work with so because i'm using the x6b receiver i have two options to work with i can either select the rssi channel to be displayed on channel 8 or channel 14 so i'll select channel 14 because i'm using sbus for my fpv quad if you're not using a lot of channels you can select channel 8 as well but that's totally up to you so just download the right file for your receiver and after that you'll have to connect the receiver to the usb adapter by using a few jumper wires so that the firmware can be programmed on the receiver so for the x6b receiver uh, since it has five pads i'll have to use five jumper wires so as you can see that i have soldered the wires on the receiver pads and then i've connected the other end of the wire to the stm adapters appropriate pin so basically you have to match the pad on the receiver to the pin on the usb adapter and after this it's very important that you do not have any power input connected to the receiver uh, like from a battery just make sure that the receiver is not connected to any power supply because the usb adapter will power up the receiver and if we have two power sources the receiver will definitely fry so once you have the receiver connected to the stm usb adapter properly you can then plug it in to the computer and you should see the led on the receiver light up and now i'll launch the stm utility software so if you have the drivers installed properly and the jumper wires connected properly as well the software should easily detect the receiver the first thing that i'll do is i'll create a backup of my original firmware that's on the receiver and to do that i'll first go to the target option and then select connect and then i'll change the address and the field values uh, to this which i've displayed over here and then click on the save option and then save it somewhere So I have a backup of the original firmware that was on this receiver. If you're using any other Flysky receiver except the 8A, then you don't need to backup the original firmware because, because you can easily find them uh, at Cleric's firmware directory. So you can download the original file from there anytime. But if you're using the 8A receiver, you will have to backup the original file because of course every 8a receiver has a custom firmware file on it and they are not universal so just keep that in mind so after creating a backup we can now flash the custom firmware onto the receiver so click on target then click on connect and if you get a pop-up saying readout protection is disabled just ignore it for now because after flashing the firmware it will be disabled so and then select program and verify and then select the custom firmware that you downloaded so go to that directory and select it and then click on start and now the custom firmware is flashed on the receiver and now i'll disconnect the usb adapter so i'll go to target and select disconnect and i'll unplug the usb adapter and i'll desolder the wires from the receiver pads carefully and after this i'll have to bind the receiver to the transmitter again so once the receiver is bound to the transmitter successfully i'll open a beta flight 
and go to the receiver tab and since I had selected the channel 14 file while flashing the firmware the channel 10 on my receiver has a spike which is the channel 14 and that's the RSSI data that we are looking for. So under the RSSI channel I'll select channel 10 and then click on save. And just to make sure that the RSSI is enabled in the OST menu as well. So under the configuration tab as well I can see that I have a RSSI reading over here. And I also have the RSSI on my OST. So that's it guys. Uh, that's how you get the RSSI for your FlySky receiver and then get it on your on screen display. So I hope you guys found this video helpful and if you did please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel and thanks a lot for watching.